Sean, Sean writes, what am I looking at? What have we got? This is Australian. Why am I looking at an Australian thing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, in rugby season, I suppose Australia becomes a challenge. But, um, no, we're super excited to uh, have um, uh, brought the Little Ripper um, shark spotting and uh, life-saving drone into the country. Um, it was They were out here last week for an international life-saving conference. And we got into discussion with them, and uh, we've become their partner. So, wow. hoping to roll this out, uh, you know, coming to a beach near you. So, what can this do for me then? So, this drone has the capacity to de deploy a life vest. So, in its, uh, I think it can carry up to four inflatable life vests. So, it drops it from the drone onto the struggling swimmer, auto inflates, and the person then would be able to hang on to it until rescue comes to them. So, uh, you know, no longer rushing out to get to the, the drowning person fly the drone out, deliver the uh, inflatable to them, effectively you know, limit panic and, uh, and, and save lives. But the, the really cool thing about this drone is that it's got uh, an AI around shark spotting. And uh, in Australia, they had really good success in being able to detect sharks and warn bathers um, before the sharks come um, too close to, to be a risk. So this, this isn't a high profit outfit for, because I, I assume in most countries, uh, rescue organizations are non-profits and uh, you know, don't, don't have a fortune to spend. I suppose the elephant in the room in South Africa is how are you going to get the CAA to let you do that? Yeah, so I think that you, you hit the nail on the head. Um, in my mind, the drone industry and certainly the UDH group has to, to look at, at, at the commercial aspects, otherwise we, we can't survive. But we also have to look at, at what's good for society and what's good for drones. And so um, our intention with this aircraft is to, is to um, well, the, it's here, it's physical. We're gonna uh, register it onto the DroneOps ROC and we're gonna, um, we're looking for, for um, uh, project sponsors that can get this moving. I think part of the intention of it is to, is to help with young people getting into the drone industry, licensed um, certified operations, not certified as in the formal aviation way, but approved operations um, on, an, on a, um, a, an ROC um, flying in, on beaches in South Africa. And we're hoping with a little bit of luck and, and if we can get the CA to, to expedite, to, to have it done by December. And that, for those of you overseas, that's our holiday season and here in Durban, very sadly, people come and drown lots. <laughs> it's, so, 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 I don't mean to be flippant, but that's that's the reality of it. Now in Australia, now is it the Westpac Group, the helicopter operators that uh, that have these as well? So they're an established manned aviation operation with rescue helicopters. Correct. And this so, is so part West, of their Westpac thing. Westpac is is, uh, is the Australian lead on this, I suppose. And um, and so theoretically, from having a Westpac helicopter flying around, now there's a Westpac drone that's been flying around. And, and this, so this, so the helicopter would be, I, I don't know down the coast a few miles this would be every few kilometers with lifeguards on the beach is that sort of how they yeah, operate so if them you think of, if, if you look at where this the the, the history of, of this drone came from from my understanding the chap that introduced jet skis and, and inflatable rubber boats into life-saving in Australia um, a chap in his 80s has now said well what about drones drones can do this too and so I don't think this is a, an alternative to people, and I don't think that mm. this will substitute a helicopter. You can't sling somebody from this, but what you can do is you can get um, uh, you know, a, a, a life-saving device rapidly Quickly, yeah. to a person yeah. without risking the life of the lifesaver. So suddenly it gives its buying time and taking away risk. The biggest flotation device here can, can be used by five people simultaneously. So if you think about rip currents and, and yeah. you know, sort yeah. of big events, if you now need to drop something and get a sort out five people at the same time you, you have the capacity to do it and uh, it can carry up to two of those sausages or four individual units and I suppose it's a really good example in our VC funded industry of of uh, a, a use case coming from a company that already uh, had a problem they knew how to solve it because they are they are the company that was solving that problem so they've created a practical solution rather than a Silicon Valley solution to a product 100% problem. and I think if you look at if you look at their history as well I mean the intention was um, was was really to look at, um, at using existing technology so it's a DJI base here um, and and getting that technology to, to actually play a positive role um, I think the, the profit motive may come in the future, but my feeling right now is that, that there's a social aspect to this. That's great for all of us, really. Now, looking across the stand, I can't but help noticing a black thing over there that looks quite sleek, and there's definitely an eVTOL. Yeah. Can you take me by the hand and lead me through that? Absolutely. So, uh, we're very excited to, to let's have... Let's go a bit closer. Yeah, let's go. Excuse us for interrupting. Sorry.
So uh, if, you have, oh, if you have a look here at the Scout, so this is a uh, European manufactured uh, VTOL. Um, this one particularly was set for the South African specification. So it has uh, um, CA approved it. Uh, I see, you've got, you've got it, yeah, ZTWAM. And I can't but help notice, you seem to have the antennas for a here link here, and you seem to have one of Philips GPSs, so I'm guessing there's a cube hiding in there. Absolutely. So it's got a lot of, of uh, new technology in it. Um, you know, the big challenge in South Africa is tr trying to meet the standards in terms of, of ECASA registrations, in terms of the CAA. And so from, from our perspective and, and, uh, and the investigation, that we've done. This aircraft is the aircraft that has the capacity to fly the greatest distance in South Africa. I've noticed here this this mapping camera can't do you much good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks like a mapping camera, but it actually is the uh, um, the Iris system. So it's the first um, aircraft that we know that is now approved by the regulator of the country to fly with automated detect and avoid. So when we demonstrated this aircraft... Hang on, hang on, just say that again. It's been approved by the South African Civil Aviation Authority so to do what? So we have demonstrated this aircraft to the South African Civil Aviation Authority and it has been approved to fly 15 kilometers of BV loss based on the fact that it meets the automated detect and avoid standards for BV loss. So this, in order to demonstrate it, we had to bring in an RV and we had to buzz it and, and the CA wanted to see that it would automatically turn out right and in a descending turn and it successfully did that. So if you were to put the the new carrier board from Profi CNC on it with the ADSB in, you could also turn out of the way of ADSB traffic at distance automatically. Um, but if you can see it, you can also t uh, turn away. So I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. So if I was to buy this, would I buy this or would you as a company run your services and operate it for me? Or if I was to buy it, because it's got the paperwork, and as long as I had the paperwork as the operator, I could fly BV loss up to 15 kilometers. We with believe it. so, yes. So that's so a huge game changer. Massive, massive. And, um, and I mean, I'm talking to you about. We haven't put the press release out to it. <laughs> opportune time to talk to you about it. But the, the reality is that that South Africa has an opportunity for um, long-range surveillance. Our regulations are pretty strict. I mean, Gary, you know about it. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, our intention was to find a solution that would be that the CA would have comfort with, that would be practical, and um, and so yes, this aircraft will be available for sale with the uh, um, surveillance payload on it, it's not cheap, I mean it comes in over a million rand, but um, but to do the job properly... Um, so what's, well, what makes it a million rand, the surveillance payload? The surveillance payload is very expensive, yes, I think it's uh, yeah, 25, 26 thousand dollars in there. Um, I'm not the technical guy, but uh, I wrote the check out. It was a, it was a proper check. Um, and, and another thing that we found in terms of surveillance is really around wind tolerance. Okay. So our ground wind tolerance for ground takeoff would be around 11 meters per second, over 40 kilometers an hour. And uh, you know the funny thing is when we did the demo for the CA, uh, it was blowing pretty much at our tolerance, and it was quite nerve-wracking. You're know, holding your hat and hoping that this aircraft's going to do what it's supposed to do. And it did. I'm going to have to ask you, where did they let you do that test? Uh, we have approval um, for a, uh, a, a flight training facility or a flight facility um, near Thunderbell Park. Okay, yeah. Um, so we had 20 kilometers to work with. We had flexible use of airspace. Um, we had a full CAA team in terms, in ter in, including the uh, technical department. So RLA's in South Africa, or letter of approval, has now moved to airworthiness formally. So we had aircraft mechanics there, you know, sort of looking in the undercarriage wow. and trying to see what's going on. So it's, it's been a real learning for us. I mean, things have stepped let's, up a lot. Let's think about it. So we couldn't just have a surveillance, because immediately I'm thinking a mapping uh, platform, yeah. that's that's 30 kilometers across, 15 that way, 15 back the other. 100%. That's an enormous area. So um, we, we have a mapper that we've had produced as well. It will be in the country within the next, uh, I think within the next uh, three or four weeks. Um, with a surveillance camera, with a, 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 a mapping, Sony mapping yeah. camera, and yeah, we think it's game changing. I mean, the, it, it, but internationally, that is. I, I, you, you, I'm being and genuinely, dear viewer, I'm being told about this for the first time. If, if you, what you're telling me is true, it's, true. it's game changing worldwide. That's, that is. You know, we, we've t we've had a look. We've been working in, in South Africa now for three years. I mean, as much as South Africa is a huge challenge, the, the regulations, once you're able to comply with them, actually allow you to do quite a lot of work on a regular basis. So, you know, BB loss flights every day, uh, mapping flights every day, these things can happen. And, and being able to get the distances is really where we believe that, that drones will suddenly have a commercial opportunity. You must be having a delivery version of it. 
So delivery really boils down to payload, and uh, and, and this aircraft in its current form can't. Ha I mean, it's running on max now with the the Iris. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Protection avoid you yeah. carrying an extra 300 and odd grams. Um, you know, you put the surveillance payload in there. We on the on the edge here. But yes, of course, delivery has got to come in, and we think that that's where the um, the ripper is going to come because we're going to have to get that approved, and we effectively have to get into the discussion of delivery because you're dropping a. a, a oh yes, of course. So yes, yes, yes. Yes. Point yes. Of view, that's going to be the next discussion. And, um, and I, you know, our experiences with the CA right now is that, um, you know, the idea of just fighting with a regulator doesn't make sense. We have to understand what their concerns are and we have to meet it. And unfortunately, in this case, it does cost some money. I mean, having Iris on board doesn't come for free. Yeah, yeah. Um, but to my knowledge, I think out of the US, um, this is the first... I think it might system. be the first... Yeah, yeah we operational. Could be. You might very well be, yeah. So, so yeah. I think you said once before, I'm a bit of a dreamer, but I, yeah. I believe we, we're getting, we, we really are getting where we want to be. Well, well done. That is amazing. And I, I'm, just explain to me where is it exactly is the CAA paperwork trail with this? So CAA have approved it. Uh, it'll go into the drone ops off spec. So I have a letter of approval. In fact, this aircraft was it received its letter of approval already. So it's in the final stages of uh, paperwork onto the um, addition onto the drone ops off spec, which is probably by the end of this week. Um, so this is a, this aircraft will wow. be flying um, to its specification within drone ops uh, next month for sure. You don't mind me posting this video then? No. Excellent. Sean, thank you very much. That's very exciting.